What's up guys, welcome to another vlog. We just made it to Chad's gym. It's the Uri Uriah Faber's Ultimate Fitness. So this is where Chad is pretty much doing his entire camp. Yesterday he had a morning session and a PM session. And then today he has the same. So this is his, gonna be his AM session. He's just getting ready right now, changing, but these guys are about to hit the mat. <laughs> Flex. Getting some sun. Son. Well, we just got done with Chad's first training session of the day, and now we're gonna go eat at what? Thai basil? Uh, is that what it's it called? Thai basil, yeah. Thai basil here in Sacramento. He's gonna get himself a big old Thai bowl, carb load. Uh, you guys, carb. I eat a lot, and when people are with me, they always think yeah. I eat a lot. <laughs> this man is a machine when it comes to eating food. Burning calories, baby. What'd you burn on your uh, last night? Last night's session? Workout, it was uh, an hour and it burned 1800 calories. Dang, just gone. Just non stop, just ah! I mean, it's just honestly really tough trying to keep up with eating enough in between workouts and then the day being over and it's time to go to bed. So, honestly, the last few nights I've had to get up in the middle of the night. Last night I got yeah. up at one. I was still editing video. Still editing. Here comes <laughs> Chad, just <laughs> zombie style. <laughs> I was hungry, man. I, and what sucks, I made an ammo shake and I put it on my nightstand. And I, I woke up at about 12.30 and I was hungry already. So I pounded that and I fell back asleep and woke up at one hungry again. I'm like, man, I better- He comes better downstairs and gets like a bagel or toast and butter yeah. and then just disappears. I'm gone, going back to bed. Uh, what is this? I don't know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, this is my first time into like the true downtown. We kind of drove through the true downtown of Sacramento pretty cool city but man it's tight in here I don't know how you get around in that pickup it really is not meant for diesel trucks it's, it's tight here in California all these little all these little like sedan little cars is what it was meant for but I do it sometimes it's tough but we just got to run them over from time to time <laughs> all right sounds good hey everybody cool all right bud I'll talk to you hey, Eric. later man I was just here I swear I was here till like 11 30 last night now I'm back. Chad's gonna abandon me here. Go on, get. It's a rest time for Chad, so I'm gonna get mine while he gets his rest. I'm gonna go in here and catch a workout and do some cardio. Typically, Chad takes a nap in the afternoon just to get some rest. He uh, left me with a trifecta meal. I think the UFC gives him these during his training camp, and I got some pre-workout. So uh, if I get bored or get done with my workout, I'll probably just put the laptop out, cut some videos, and and work on Chad's video. But here we go. I'm gonna do 40 minutes of cardio and a full shoulder day. And I'll most likely have some time because Chad might not be here for like two hours, maybe two and a half hours. And if so, I'll just go chill at the pool. I'm pretty sure this place has an outdoor pool, which is cool. So let's go get it done. I don't know how good you guys can see that, but that is, that's pretty cool. Is that because of wildfire? It's like that haze is kind of, uh -huh. there's a big fire up north, I think, from here. Um, that's cool, you got the mountain, that's the coastal mountain range. Right What's there. out there? Deer, elk? Deer, elk, turkey, pigs, a lot of wild pigs. Um, Tons of pigs. But yeah, a lot of tule elk. Not a lot, but there's there's a decent herd out there. I've never seen one. No? Chad's taking me out to a spot where they have a black-tailed deer. And I've only seen a handful of them while we're out traveling through California, so I hope we see some bucks. And what I noticed, this is me just kind of like guessing that the deer out here are way more far ahead on antler growth than yeah. back home. Yep. Because I noticed your deer shed before. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it and and we notice it the, like just the coastal. So the coastal deer are typically considered full blood blacktail, and then anything east of the I-5, which is what we're back on out there, they call them bench lakes. So they, I mean, technically it still could be a, like the ones that we're gonna go look at are are pure black tail but because they're just east like maybe a mile they're considered a bench lake the season opens earlier the season out there opens july like mid-july so i mean they just everything's just a lot um, a lot further ahead growth wise and then if you go you know i feel like the more east you go kind of the, the slower it is it seems like but um, so do you see that mountain range that the sun just went by? just barely yeah i can see the mountain tops yeah that's so cool uh-huh Sun. Yeah, I don't have much time left. The moon on this side. We got bucks. 
<laughs> oh, look at oh, that he's one. he's only got one side. Yeah, his left one, huh? Yeah. Or is he Dude. Look, yeah. His, look at that look one. Look at the other one. Dang, look at that that's tucker. so cool. Oh. oh, it's so funny. The grass is so uh -huh. tall that their heads just pop up. Oh yeah, the one antlered one. That's and then the one in the there's one doe. Dude, wait till that one sticks his head up. Holy crap. I couldn't tell if he was a four. Big three point frame with front. Is forks. that what he is? Mm -hmm. Man, I wish I could show you guys through this thing. I have a spotting scope, but whoop. Get him. Shaky. <laughs> That's cool. That one. Yeah. Holy, that's a stud. Ooh, what's going on guys? It is past midnight, it's 12, 12 a.m. I'm still up and I just finished editing a video for Chad's channel. I'll give you guys a little sneak peek here. Just reading the comments off his first video, it looks like a lot of people are excited to see some of his training stuff. And I'm no expert on like making MMA videos, but I made him a cool little montage. Give you guys a sneak peek. Anyways guys, uh, I gotta be quiet because Chad's upstairs asleep so I had the music down real low. Hope you guys enjoyed day one of the vlog. I'm gonna hit the sack and uh, I'll see you later. Hey, two. what's up guys? Good morning. It's day two of the vlog. Chad's back at it in the gym. Today is sparring. The entire team is out here training. Chad's over here. You guys are pushing it, man. I don't know like what percentage they're they're going at each other, but they're all padded up and they're getting after it. It's pretty cool being able to be in here. I'm like a fly on the wall, man. They got so many great UFC fighters in here right now. I can't even I can't even name them all, but there's some really big names in here. It's people that I've watched for a long time fighting the UFC. What the? Oh, we gotta get these babies down. Relive our glory days. <laughs> Relive the glory days. That's what we've been doing the last 10 minutes. Yeah. Thinking about all the missed opportunities we had elk hunting oh, together. <laughs> it hurts. These people won't understand ever. I know. Dude, they are way heavier than I remember. <laughs> you think sweet? And then the other side. We almost, remember for a while, we're like, There's, I don't think that's a match. If anyone's curious how Chad and I met and became buddies, we had a mutual friend named Will Farah, who was a huge hunter, huge MMA fan. And I worked with Will uh, filming his hunts and kind of being like a spotter or whatever. Just became super good friends with him over the years. Uh, Will was a huge fan of MMA. He actually owned the local uh, showdown fights here in U or back home in Utah. And somehow, you guys met. How did you meet Will? Um, through Uriah Faber. Really? Uriah Faber's like, he kept telling me, dude, I have a buddy. And I'm not sure how they met, maybe because of the fight organization, but it's like, I got a buddy, Will. He loves hunting, loves the outdoors. He's like, you guys would be like best friends. I got to introduce you guys. So he finally, like, I don't know, probably after two years of that, I got to meet him and just fell in love with the dude. And you guys planned awesome. to hunt down there together? Yeah, we planned to hunt. I went down there, it was like me, him, Heather, my dad, um, I think even JT might have been down there that year, but just a couple other buddies and uh, I think that's where I ran into you down there. Yeah, that's what's funny is, public. yep, I was down there, uh, I was helping on the CWMU, which in Utah is basically, it's private land that is, it's its own unit with its own tags and everything. So right up against the unit was a lot of public land and they, they had just an open bull hunt. So me and Chad both had archery tags for the any yeah. bull. Utah hunt and we met through Will and became buddies and started hunting together down there and this is a funny story because the day that we found these we actually had such a close opportunity at a giant bull oh it hurts yeah it does hurt because the bull ended up getting killed after we missed him um, and he went 384 just a oh. huge bull super massive long points just kind of narrow but just a giant 
So that morning, Chad and I were hunting together. We're sitting on a water hole all morning, and it was kind of slow. We decided to what? We just got up and was like, we got to make something happen. Yeah, we could, I think we had heard some bugles off in the distance right at first light, but they were far, and we're like, let's just sit here. And it didn't sound like they were moving our mm, way at all. So we're like, well, let's just get up, and we'll try to move and maybe make some, some calls, or throw some calls out and see if we can get anything to respond. Dude, we walked maybe 50 yards, Ripped, dude, a, ripped a cow call. And this thing screamed like <laughs> right in front of us. <laughs> right in front of us. So all of a sudden, it was like panic mode, not enough time. Here comes a cow elk, and she's, she's like, she's in a trot. He's uh -huh. hot right behind her. I hit the cow call a couple yeah. times. Yeah, he's, uh, uh, uh. and I hit the cow call, and he pulled off the cow and came our way. And I just remember it was just like, this big rack just coming through the sagebrush, but kind of right at us. Chad was to my right, so he had a little more of an angle on the bull. For me, it was almost straight at, quartering at me pretty hard. And this is like back before everyone's carrying like super fancy rangefinders. And yeah. It happened so fast. I was like, he's got to be, what I say, 40 you or 50? 50. You said shoot for, so 50. shoot for 50. Shoot for 50. So I pull back, and there's a tiny little sapling right in front of me that I'm hiding behind. And I step out and didn't see, like my sights were clear from the tree but there was a branch that was low that I couldn't see through my sight. Mm -hmm. Release, hit my arrow, hits it, and just go, like, I don't even know. It like, just went over, it. over the bull, <laughs> like, up. not even close. Not even close. Bull flipped around, ran off, and me and Chad look at each other like, oh, did man. that just happen? Ugh. Just wouldn't you come so close and work so hard. But anyways, later that day, we are hiking through the canyon, we saw this cave, and it looked like the cave that... You would think that maybe years ago that People Indians would, would use or somebody would mm -hmm. dwell in it. And sure enough, we climbed up in there and there was like the very back corner. Do you remember that black yeah. smoke area where it looked fire. like fire had yep. been for years? And we're sitting in the cave and, and I had ditched my backpack and binoculars at the bottom of the canyon. And I look straight across this box <laughs> canyon and I'm like, dude, Chad, give me your binos. Yeah. And we didn't even know each other that good. Like literally only known each other for a few days mm -hmm. he's like do you see a shed like he knew yeah just from talking to me how much i was in a shed he's like do you see a shed or something pulled up his binos and i honestly don't remember which site it was but one of these sites was yeah. just laying on the side hill clear as day we bombed over there and uh i'm like man it's got to be the other side's got to be somewhere close and chad was right in front of me went over the rise of the dirt hill and you yeah. found the other side yeah so hold those things up dude they're sweet they laid there for a long yeah. time look at that i mean i would love an opportunity at that bull yeah six by seven a little extra on the fourth on the right side well his right side and my left just a tank dude he's pretty heavy too yeah it's a good bull man that's what we're looking for Dang That's what we're looking for right there. I need a redo. <laughs> Please. God, if I could just go back in time, like knowing what I know now and just being as skilled a hunter as I, especially with a bow now, God, and the way that the hunting was back then, mm -hmm. over in that spot, I wish, I just wish. It's that time of the day again. Chad is back home getting his afternoon rest. And while he does that, I come to the gym and get my workout in. I'm here at California Family Fitness again. This is my last day, last full day here in California. I actually fly home early tomorrow morning. So I've got one more workout while I'm here and then it's back to the daily grind back in Salt Lake for one day. And then I fly to Boise, Idaho with my girlfriend Bridget and also BMAC and Casey. And we're taking our uh, taking our ladies to the Joe Rogan um, comedy show, which should be super fun. I'm excited for that. But man, living on the road, living on the road. I'm gonna finish this 90 days strong. I know I keep saying that, but finishing that strong. Anyways, I'm gonna go catch my workout today is biceps and triceps, and then also 40 minutes of cardio. And then I'll probably head back to Chad's house. We'll cook some dinner, enjoy our evening, and just relax. And I wanna show you his trophy room. He's got he's got some pretty cool animals, including his big Alaskan moose. So anyways, once I get done with that, I'll show you guys the trophy room. I'm all out of space. My wall space is- Yeah, he's limited. I'd say 98, 99% full. So these three right here are all Cali Blacktail. I shot these two with my bow. Um, these, 
These two actually I got where I took you. Oh yeah? Yeah. That's a cool country out there. And then this one was up north a little further. He's sweet. They're so pretty. Earlier we told you about our buddy Will. This is Will, <laughs> Chad, <laughs> and, and Max. Max. All on that little bike. That was good times. That's funny. Big Buck, Bodacious. Bodacious. Wait, Bodacious, yeah. Bring to the Salt Lake Show. God, I keep looking at him from outside of the room and I just really am like, okay, that deer is huge. Yeah, I kind of, I wanted to tape him while you were here actually because we kind of just rough taped him real quick at 218, but I, I wanted to straight. do it again and just see if we could, if it, that if it deer would come is with so different. big. This is cool. Take a look yeah. at that real quick. Same hunt as the other one. Yeah, Ohio right? again. That was my butt with my buddy Zach. I love the freaks. He was, I mean, if that dude matched, he'd probably be 170 inch, eight point. Yeah, yes, he super is. heavy, big frame. All right, we're going to go take a look at the moose. <laughs> this thing. Bullwinkle? Uh-huh. I saw it for the first time the other day. The thing is giant. You can't even put it <laughs> in perspective how big that thing is. Yeah, that was cool, man. I got drawn for a tag in Alaska. It was a, a Koyukuk region. So I have a buddy that lives there, and he's the one that told me to put in for that area. Um, and I got drawn for it. It was a trophy tag, so I had to have either four on his on his fronts or be 50, over 50 inches wide. And he's two by three, so he stood doesn't up. qualify. Nope. And so we're trying to measure. <laughs> you know, he's standing there looking at us at about, I don't know, 50, 60 yards. And I'm like, I, I mean... They all look big to me, you know, a 50 inch moose looks huge. And so we're sitting there for like two or three minutes trying to debate whether we thought he was over 50 and he, he turns and we got the backside and both of us were like, he's over. Pull the trigger. Smoking <laughs> him, yeah. He tipped over right there. We went down there and measured him, he was 63. Dang man, that thing's huge. This is one thing that's on my bucket list. This is his Utah archery, any bull elk guys. This is not like a limited unit. This is the open unit. Which honestly, oh, yeah. any mature bull past a raghorn is like a unicorn out there. That's one of the prettiest bulls I've seen taken on just the gentle season Super hunt. Super cool. So this is my last night here. Unfortunately, I booked my plane <laughs> ticket for this morning, and I'm supposed to fly out tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah. So we had to rearrange my flight, which uh, was non-refundable. I did not click the insurance Damn. button and pay for that. So. Headed home tomorrow, but yeah, that's it. Uh, Chad is going to be dumping a ton of videos on his channel, so go check him out. Just search Chad Mendez. I'll put a link in the description box below, but that's it for me from Cali, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, hell yeah, bro. Thanks for coming out. That was fun. I'll be seeing you in Boise. Hell yeah. Anybody who's going to the UFC fights in Boise, comment below. Let me know if you guys are going to be there. I can't wait to see Chad back in the octagon. Can't wait to get back in there. Yeah, it's going to be fun. So we'll see you guys. I'll see you guys back in Utah. Later.